Hello and welcome to the Psychologist NG TV with me, Dr. Blessing Ntamu. Merry Christmas and I'm wishing you a prosperous 2023 ahead. We're still in the season of Christmas, the Yuletide season. Well, today I'm going to be discussing the psychosexual stages of development by Sigmund Freud. Uh, Sigmund Freud, who propounded the psychoanalysis theory, came up with a theory of personality development. And basically he said uh, that the first five years of the child are the most crucial in personality development of the child. You know, so whatever goes, goes on within the first five years actually set the stage for the adult personality of the child. You know, and he believed that this development at every stage of development, there are five stages in all, that a particular part of the body takes central stage as a zone for pleasure, the erogenous zone for the child, for the individual. So there's a particular part of the body around which pleasure is centered and uh, whatever happens in relation to the part of the body also affects the personality development of the child. And then he also said that Personality development is sequential uh, and it's universal, it's sequential. So you go from one stage to the other in a sequential order. And as you go from one stage to the other, one part of the body, which is the original zone, is being replaced by another part of the body. So now let's go straight on to these five stages of personality development. Now the first stage of personality development has been termed by um, Sigmund Freud as the oral stage of development, the oral stage of development. And at this stage, the mouth is the erogenous zone. So the mouth of the individual is the erogenous zone, is the zone for pleasure. Now this stage is from zero to one year old. And so Sigmund Freud says that when a child or a baby is sucking, it's not just sucking, you know, uh, to satisfy hunger, but it's also sucking from pleasure, for pleasure. So, you know, the process of sucking is also pleasurable to the child. And now at that stage, how the relationship between the child and the mother is and how the winning process goes affects, you know, the uh, personality development of the child. So if there's a relationship, a proper relationship between the mother and the baby, a satisfying relationship, you know, um, the baby grows up normally and develops a normal personality. Now, if the relationship is too comfortable, there's too much attention given to the child, the child finds too much comfort, the child may grow up to become a personality that is overly dependent, you know, and overly narcissistic as well, you know, that just thinks about self. And also, if there's uh, some frustration experienced from the relationship between the mother and the child, for instance, a mother that is not always available to meet the needs or to gratify the needs of the baby and all of that, the child may withdraw and become a passive personality, you know, that just behaves passively, uh, is not passionate about things in life and stuff like that. So at the oral stage, which is from zero to one year old, the erogenous zone or the zone for gratification or pleasure is the mouth of the child. Of course, you know that oral is related to the mouth and uh, the relationship between the mother and the child is very crucial in determining the adult personality of the child. There should be a balance. You know, the child should not be over pampered, but the mother has to be present to meet the needs of the child. The child must not be neglected as well. Now let's move on to the second stage of psychosexual development. The second stage of psychosexual development is the anal stage. So we move from the oral stage to the anal stage and this happens between the ages of one to three years old you know and uh, the anal stage the erogenous zone for the anal stage is the anus as of course you know anal is related to the anus so the child finds pleasure from the anus derives pleasure so the whole toileting process and especially the toilet training process is very crucial at this stage of development so usually we know even as adults for people who are probably fixated at the anal stage when you go to the toilet sometimes even when you finish expelling the waste you just sit down there because you enjoy the process so that's what Sigmund Freud is trying to say that between the ages of one to three the process of toileting going to the toilet and expelling faces is uh, perceived as pleasurable by the one to three year old and so toilet training is very crucial at this stage now any child that is too the, the, that the toilet training process is too strict the, the the parents or the significant adults in the house 
go through that process too strictly, put placing too much demands on the child and producing a lot of frustration, the child will develop into a retentive personality type. You know, so when there's too much pressure on the child during toilet training, uh, when the demands of the child are excessive beyond the age, expectations are higher than the child can bear, and there's a lot of frustration experienced during toilet training, the child grows up to become a retentive personality type. So such a child is obstinate, such a child, according to Sigmund Freud, is stingy, such a child is cruel. But that kind of child is also an obedient child, obedient to authority, is a very orderly child, a child that will be neat, you know, obsessively neat and orderly and respectful to authority. You know, on the other hand, a child that is at uh, the toilet training process is too liberal and uh, no restrictions. The child can empty the bowl whenever the child likes, might grow up to be a very gener generous child, you know, as opposed to the retentive personality that is stingy, this one the expulsive personality, the type that went, underwent a liberal toilet training process, is actually a very generous child. So he shares whatever he has with everyone, you know, that asks for. However, this kind of child is going to grow up to be a very messy child, a very disorderly child, and a very um, uh, a rebellious child. It's not obedient to authority, does not submit to anyone. And Sigmund Freud actually tried to explain that the retentive personality type, the one that is stingy and holds Hold on to things that this personality develops as a child tries to hold back the feces uh, in order to annoy the over demanding parents you know so as he holds back those feces he learns to hold back things and becomes very stingy you know while the expulsive personality type expels at will nobody scolds him wherever he likes can expel the waste waste and he's going to grow up to become a generous child always giving just the same way it was expelling the feces, but then it's going to be very disorderly, very messy, and very rebellious. So that's the stage two, which is the anal stage. We move right from here to the phallic stage, the phallic stage of development. And this goes on between the ages of three to six years old. Now, in the phallic stage, the erogenous zone at the phallic stage are actually the genitals of the child the genitals of the child so that's the original zone and pleasure is centered around the genitals of the child but remember that at this stage the child you know it's not doesn't have any partner the ego has not even developed so it's narcissistic in nature that means it's self-love so the child actually derives this pleasure from self-manipulation of the genitals masturbation this is the only stage at which you know masturbation is uh, due to the development of the child and it's normal and all of that now whatever happens at this stage of development will determine the personality of the child now this stage of development is also one of the most controversial stages of development in Sigmund Freud's theory because it is within these stages that he houses his concepts of Oedipus uh, a complex and then which his uh, student um, uh, uh, also brought another concept, Electra Complex. And then we also have the castration anxiety. And then we have the penis envy within this stage. All of these concepts of Sigmund Freud are debatable, uh, criticized by other psychologists. Now, Sigmund Freud explained that at this stage, uh, the male child, the boy child, uh, developed some psychosexual attraction towards the mother. He desires to possess the mother and desires to take the father out of the scene. So this Oedipus was named after a Greek mythology, uh, the character Oedipus, who killed his uh, father and possessed the mother, you know, sexually. You know, so Sigmund Freud believes that at the stage between the ages of three to six, the boy child has psychosexual attraction towards the mother. And so he desires to replace um, the father and then desires to take the father off the scene. That's what Oedipus complex is about. However, this kind of psychosexual uh, attraction towards the mother is resolved through the process of identification. As the child grows up to find out that that is impossible, he rather identifies with the father and then desires to become a male figure like the father. So uh, then he no longer has those feelings of, you know, taking the place of um, the, uh, the father, and, you know, possessing the mother and all of that. On the other side uh, is the Electra complex. The term Electra complex was not actually used by Sigmund Freud, but, but was coined by his student, Carl Jung, you know, uh, to 
uh, explain the same tendency in the girl child within the ages of three to six. They believe that the girl child also has an attraction for the father and wishes to take the mother out of the scene. So that's the Electra complex. And also it's uh, coined after a Greek mythology of a character known as Electra. You know, and like I said, all of these concepts are highly controversial because many psychologists reject, you know, these concepts of Sigmund Freud. But basically in our society, we actually find out that within those ages, uh, to some extent, some male children are attracted to the mother and closer to the mother and vice versa the girls are attracted to the father and vice versa whether there's a desire to possess you know the parents psychosexually that will be left to more research i would say now also within the stage there's what we call castration anxiety the boy uh, fears that he could be castrated if he's found out to be psychosexually attracted to the mother now that's one explanation of castration anxiety He's afraid that his penis could be cut off uh, and he won't be able to possess the mother if he's discovered to have psychosexual attraction for the mother. Another explanation is that whilst the child self-manipulates, as you might have noticed, the child will self-manipulate a lot within that period. And then, you know, as the parents try to moderate self-manipulation, the child gets afraid, the boy child gets afraid that the penis will be cut off. That creates castration anxiety. Now, if the attempt to stop the boy child from self-manipulating is done too harshly in a, matter that, in a manner that produces too much frustration, the child might develop to become, you know, um, a frigid personality, frigid sexual personality, rigid, you know, and this excessive strictness has been said to produce, you know, some problems in adults, adults who relating to sex because of how strict least some parents try to stop self-manipulation we need to know that at that stage self-manipulation is somewhat normal it should be moderated but don't be too strict don't be too harsh and don't let the process of moderating uh, self-manipulation lead to too much anxiety or frustration in the boy child in the boy child now he explained also the concept of a uh, penis envy that the the girl child actually blames the mother for the absence of a penis you might want to recall that at that age, uh, Sigmund Freud explained that the girl child is actually attracted to the father. So he blames the mother for the absence of a penis and develops penis envy because he does, she doesn't possess a penis. And without the possession of the penis, she cannot, you know, uh, um, be who she wants to be. Anyway, the desire to possess a penis is replaced with the desire to possess a baby. This also, this conflict is also resolved uh, through the process of identification, where the mother now tries to identify with the character, the baby, right? The girl child tries to identify with the character of the mother. You know, so she grows up, you know, trying to identify with the character of the mother instead of being, um, uh, a, 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 what do I say now, an uh, opponent contesting the position of the mother she identifies with the mother character and grows up to be that so she has penis envy she wishes she has a penis she doesn't have that and all of that now at this stage is when we should begin to self-educate our children you know this is one of the educational implications because actually because at the stage within the age of three to six years old the phallic stage of psychosexual development according to sigmund freud at this age, the genitals of the child become sensitive to manipulation. That's why they self-manipulate, because they enjoy self-manipulation, you know. And all of the feelings that you, an adult, has when you self-manipulate or when you engage in sexual activities, that's the same pleasure that they feel. So they become sensitive to manipulation. It's at this stage that we should begin to sex-educate our children, age-appropriate sex education, give them the information. They would naturally ask a lot of questions about the genitals, about the differences between the boy and the girl child, give them since sincere answers, correct answers, age-appropriate answers. Don't give them um, some tales, you know, that do not uh, appeal to common sense. Because like I usually say, if you do not teach them the right thing, someone out there will manipulate them and teach them the wrong thing. So sex education should be begin actually at the phallic stage. For more information, you can visit my video on sex educating the child. Uh, the next stage is the latent, latent stage of development. Within the ages of 6 to 11, that's from 6 years up to adolescence. And this stage is termed as latent because there's not so much activity in terms of psychosexual development. No zone of the body is the erogenous zone, you know. So there's latent, the latent stage, there's a latent phase of psychosexual development. If you know about latent energy, energy at rest. 
So psychosexual development is actually at rest at the latent stage of development within the ages of 6 to 11, you know, 6 to adolescent. So there's not much that is done. And at this stage, what teachers can do and parents is to channel the energies of the child into productive activities, into education, into active uh, artistic pursuits, you know, uh, identifying the talents of the child and developing the talents. This is a time where the child can learn, can explore, can develop skills and all of that. So parents and uh, teachers should capitalize on this latent stage to educate the child to develop a lot of skills and talent in the child. And right after this stage, we move on to the genital stage of development. And that is from 11 years upward. That is from adolescence upward. Now, at this stage too, the erogenous zone, the zone for gratification is still the genitals of the child. But the difference is that uh, satisfaction, satisfaction, uh, gratification does not come from self-manipulation anymore, should not come from self-manipulation, you know, except there's some form of uh, stagnation at the phallic stage, you know, for those who, you know, who say uh, it's okay to uh, masturbate at whatever age. Now, if you're not uh, fixated at the phallic stage, according to Sigmund Freud's theory, again, at the genital stage of development, you know, gratification should come from heterosexual relationships heterosexual relationship this is according to Sigmund Freud not according to me and so you expect her to get gratification from experimenting with sex with the opposite sex not with the same sex not with yourself not self-manipulation okay I know this, a lot of people will think about this differently but this theory was propounded by Sigmund Freud thousands or hundreds of years ago not by less than Tamil you know so at this stage he believes that uh, the erogenous zone the zone for gratification are the genitals but instead of getting gratification from self-manipulation as in the phallic stage that the individual will get gratification from heterosexual activities and if the activities progress normally at this stage as it should it should culminate into marriage at the 20s you know at the ages of 20s and above so these are the psychosexual stages of development according to Sigmund Freud. We first of all have the oral stage zero to one year. We have the anal stage one to three years. And then we have the phallic stage three to six years. And then we have the latent stage uh, six to 11 years or six years to adolescence. And then we have the genital stage from adolescence to adulthood from 11 years upward. Remember, at the oral stage, the erogenous zone, the zone for gratification is the mouth. At the anal stage, the zone for gratification is the anus. At the phallic stage, the zone for gratification is the genitals of the boy and girl. But then gratification comes from self-manipulation. At the latent stage, the latent stage is a stage of rest, so there's no zone for gratification. And then we move on to the genital stage, where again, uh, the genitals become the zone for gratification. But at this stage, Gratification is not from self-manipulation. It should be from a heterosexual relationship. But this is according to Sigmund Freud. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do so right now. Click on the word subscribe just beneath this video. Also click on the bell sign to enable notification so that when new videos are uploaded, you will be notified. Thank you and have a very Merry Christmas.